education. Uh, we, aim, we, draw, we draw from peer-reviewed literature, uh, unpublished research, and knowledge of the field, and we set that out to local and international experts to get their input, to try and put together a set of principles that could actually guide an approach to implementing some risk identification processes. So I'll quickly go through some of those principles. These, should, these shouldn't be rocket science. So, best practice principles. You, should, you need to assess risk across multiple domains. So we know it's not just about the injury, but it's about the person, it's about the employer. There are multiple domains that should be part of your risk identification. You need to balance the timing of information availability and the effectiveness of action. You need to combine different types of information. There'll be information that's important that's available on the claim form. There's information that's important that you get directly from the injured worker. You need a system that's going to be able to combine those appropriately. You need to deliver clear information to decision makers. And quite often, that is the case manager making the decision about what's going to be the next step. Or it could be actually passing that information on to the treating practitioner. You need to gather information early enough to intervene when it counts. And there's that focus on early intervention. Early intervention means something different to just about everyone. There is an identified window of opportunity between six to 12 weeks after an injury where you're gonna get most bang for your buck from an, an, an intervention. So your processes should be aimed or targeted to actually provide some level of uh, intervention in that space. You need to allow for systematic documenting and monitoring. And that's really difficult if the information that you need is buried in the case notes on your system. You need to be able to systematically identify it and pull it out. You should combine some automated and judgment-based decision making. The research tells us you can't have one, just one. Whether it's purely decision, or automated decision making or purely qualitative, you need a balance between the two. And lastly, it has to fit the system that's using it. And that's often a, a, a part that's left to last in terms of how is it actually going to in, be incorporated into the existing system. So that brings me to our partnership with WorkCover Queensland. I would like to just describe the approach that we've taken to um, adding risk identification to case management within the WorkCover Queensland concept, context and actually making sure we're applying those best practice principles that have been developed uh, through the entire journey from start to finish. So we spent time embedded in WorkCover Queensland to understand how case management works in the WorkCover Queensland context. And to understand the systems already in place and the key case management structures and how case management managers work to assist workers in their recovery, rehab and return to work. Then, with this information in mind, we, there were several models of introducing risk identification that were proposed. And we had case managers involved in that process in terms of identifying those models. And we engaged with external stakeholders, so employers and treatment providers, even regulators, to get input on the model proposed. And based on that, we designed a system that had the capability to be um, incorporated to, into existing uh, management structures. And we are now in the midst of uh, actually testing the recovery blueprint in practice, which is kind of the exciting stage. So the recovery blueprint, I'm running out of time. Um, very, very quickly, the first step is to identify, um, I guess, groups of claims that are likely to uh, have a similar trajectory in terms of their recovery. And then direct those, uh, those groups to case managers with the appropriate skill set to help that group. So if that group is one that doesn't need much input, then you will, case managers will have a focus on, I guess, procedural skills in terms of getting, getting out of the way. Compared to people who might need more support, they'll be then with case managers who are actually specifically trained to provide the level of support required. The next step for those profiles, or for those, those groups that need um, a greater level of support is to actually gather information about them uh, in a structured and consistent way that can actually help inform the management of, uh, of that person's recovery, rehab and return to work. 
And uh, the focus there is on consistency across uh, different case managers, and then uh, other people being able to understand how that was, um, how to best support that person in their return to work. And the last step is the uh, care delivery approach, where we're actually applying a stepped care model, where case managers will, um, will select from a, a menu of options that's been informed by the, all the information that they've collected on that claim to date. And if those options are exhausted, to then be able to step up to another level of care. In terms of evaluating the recovery blueprint, I'm going to be really quickly, really quick here. We've developed a, a logic model because this is a complex intervention. So you can't just examine return to work rates and expect to have a real understanding about whether uh, an intervention like that has worked or not. So we've developed a, a model that looks at the different components that would be required to achieve a successful outcome in terms of uh, return to work. And we designed a pilot that actually rolled out the different parts of the recovery blueprint one at a time. So we can actually determine the impact of the different parts of the model itself, but then also have that opportunity to identify some of those challenges when you're implementing a new system, some unanticipated um, uh, parts of the system that might not be functioning that well that can actually be improved along the way. And part of that process is identifying existing data, but then what, other, what new data needs to be um, collected to be able to effectively evaluate that, that model. And then shifting the, the key dates of that pilot around important milestones in the business. Researcher will tell you that you need a certain amount of time, but you need to actually shift those things around, whether it be board meeting dates, or maybe it's actually around school holidays, before you're actually introducing new parts of your, uh, of your model to the case managers. 